Hey everyone, my name is Liz. And I'm Brenda. Today we're bringing you our very first video in our Builder Pro series. This series is gonna focus on bringing you the most accurate and helpful information related to our products, such as building tours, site preparation tips, and DIY videos. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for new weekly videos and don't forget to like and comment. In this video, we're gonna be walking you through the concrete preparation process for steel buildings. We'll go over topics such as forms and footings, cement pour and leveling, and smoothing and cutting. The first step you need to take when preparing your site for your slab is to make sure you measure and mark your site accurately. Your first goal is to measure your area and confirm the dimensions of your building. One of the best ways you can tackle this job is with the batter board method. Down below, we'll share a link on, with a step-by-step -step look at the batter board installation process. Essentially, when measuring your area, you'll need to use an open reel measuring tape and four flags. To measure your area, use your long tape to measure the desired width and length of your building. Now that you have the dimensions of your building, place a flag at each corner of your area. From here, measure across each corner in the form of an X. Both of these measurements should be the same as they assure your area is square. If the measurements are not the same, adjust your four flags accordingly to get the measurements as close to one another as possible. Now you have your area marked and ready for underground utilities to be located. When you're ready, call your state's utility notification system to have any underground utilities marked. If you're in Michigan, you can call MISDIG at 811 to have any underground lines marked before digging. Make sure you contact MISDIG before starting site work to make sure you won't disrupt any dangerous lines such as gas or electric lines. And don't forget to contact your local building department to make sure you're able to build the desired size on your property. Once you get the green light from your building department, you can start prepping your base. When preparing your site for a new concrete slab, a common material used is Class II sand. Sand is an inexpensive and effective way to level your site. For this specific project, our client had three truckloads of Class II sand leveled and compacted for a 30 by 50 garage. The amount of sand you will need depends on the size and depth of your project as well as how level the site currently is. For example, a site that is approximately 12 inches off level will require more material than a site that is 6 inches off level. Down below, we'll be tagging a material calculator that you can use, so make sure you check that out when subscribing to our channel. Another alternative to sand base is gravel, which you can also calculate with the material calculator. Now that your base is level and ready for forms, let's take a look at the purpose of forms and their installation process. Forms are essentially a mold that will hold your concrete in place during the pouring and curing process. Without forms, your concrete wouldn't be able to hold any shape or thickness as it's spread. You can compare this to baking a cake. The concrete mix is your cake batter and the forms are the mold that the mix spills into. These are crucial for every concrete project. Once you're ready to create your forms, gather the necessary amount of 2x4s or 2x6s for your slab. 2x4s will be for a 4 inch slab, whereas 2x6s will be for a 6 inch slab. With all of your boards ready, lay them in place and get ready to secure them with a tool, such as a ground stake. An extra step you can do to help avoid the concrete from sticking to the forms is adding a conditioner, such as a synthetic oil, to the boards. This will help avoid having any concrete chip as you take the forms off later on. As you secure your first board with the stakes, try to keep your stakes slightly below the forms. This way, the stakes aren't in the way when it's time to screed the concrete. For the first board, we recommend using just a few stakes in case you need to go back and make adjustments later on when squaring the project. Once your first board is in place, you can fasten the two side pieces into your first board and assure the tops of the boards are flush. Hold off on securing your sideboards with stakes until you've secured your last board. Now, make sure your forms are square and use a laser level to assure all four corners are at the same grade level. Lastly, fasten the boards with your remaining stakes. Now you're ready to dig your footings. Footings are deep trenches that are dug around the perimeter of your slab and filled with concrete. These footings will support the weight of your concrete slab and help prevent issues mm -hmm. such as settling. 
The dimensions of your footings are measured as width by depth. For example, 12 by 12 footings are 12 inches wide by 12 inches deep. Mm -hmm. For a steel building, we require a minimum of 12 by 12 footings. However, these will completely vary depending on your local building department's requirements for your area. Once you have the proper dimensions for your footings, you are ready to start digging. When digging, you can use tools like a shovel or a clamshell post hole digger. As you dig, make sure you are continuously checking your measurements to make sure your footings are a consistent size all the way around. It's time to reinforce your slab. During this step, you'll focus on adding reinforcement to your site to help strengthen your concrete. Typically, you'll see concrete remesh and rebar being used. Concrete remesh comes in rolls or sheets of steel that are laid across your entire site. The steel adds flexibility to the slab, which in turn helps prevent future cracking. When adding remesh, you'll unroll the large rolls of steel and lay them across the entire area of the slab and partially into the footings. The steel should also be overlapped by approximately 6 inches to assure they tie and bond together well once covered in concrete. We recommend having one to two people help you during this step as the steel can roll back together if not handled at both ends. Sheets are much easier to work with as they do not need to be unrolled. An extra step you can do here is adding plastic chairs beneath your remesh to keep it raised, in turn eliminating the need to manually raise it during the pour. Additionally, rebar, short for reinforcing bar, is also used in concrete construction. Rebar reinforces your slab and provides additional strength. While not all projects require rebar, it is highly recommended. These steel bars are placed across your entire area in the form of a grid and then bend down directly into the footings. Adding reinforcement to your slab helps improve the overall structural stability and appearance. This step is crucial. Now you're finally ready for your concrete. During this step, we recommend having anywhere between two to four people helping you with the pour, depending on the size of your project. If you haven't already, check out the concrete calculator down below to calculate how much concrete you should order for your project. Once your concrete is ordered and on the way to your site, make sure your team is ready. Your fresh concrete mix needs to be discharged within 60 to 90 minutes from the time it's loaded into the mixer. Therefore, your team and your tools should be ready prior to the truck's arrival. During the pour, you will see the mixer will begin discharging wet concrete through a long chew. As the concrete is poured, use a concrete placer to move the concrete so it's distributed evenly across your area. During this step, you'll also need to manually raise the concrete remesh so that it can remain inside the slab rather than below it. You'll have to do this step if you didn't use plastic chairs earlier. Time management is critical in this step. As you're spreading your concrete, keep in mind that you only have a limited time with your truck's fresh mm -hmm. mix. You want to work efficiently for the best results. As you're spreading your concrete, you will have to utilize a screed. Screeding is used to assure you have the level you need in your slab. Whether you're doing a level floor or assuring a water level is placed towards a drain. The vibration from a vibration screen does a great job at leveling and an even a greater job at consolidating the concrete. Additionally, it helps to fill in any air pockets and disperses any aggregate to create a strong and more uniform slab. When using this tool, you want to make sure your team is simultaneously puddling the concrete behind you to make, so make sure the concrete isn't too high or too low. This step will give you a nice smooth finish. Now that you've screeded your concrete, you'll be using a bowl float. The main purpose of bowl floating your concrete is to level out any high or low areas left from screeding. We recommend running the bowl float perpendicular to the way the slab was poured to help with leveling. When using this tool, you'll be slowly running it forward and backward across your slab. As long as you screeded your concrete well, this step should be fairly quick and easy. Great, you're one step closer to your new concrete slab. Now let's take a look at the next step, troweling your concrete. After floating, you'll need to trowel your concrete. In this step, you can use a walk behind or ride on power trowel to even out your concrete surface. It's crucial you wait until the concrete can hold your weight along with the machines. If the concrete is not ready, the machine could sink into the concrete, creating holes and other unwanted issues. Troweling is an essential tool to smooth, level, and polish concrete for a quality finish. Additionally, troweling your concrete will both harden it and increase its density. Another finishing tool you'll see used in this project is a hand edger. 
The hand edger is used on the edges of the slab for a nice rounded edge and to avoid chipping or damage during form removal. This tool offers you a clean and finished look. Another look for your concrete is the boom finish. This is a popular texture that you've more than likely seen in person. Let's take a look. For this breezeway, the client requested a boom finish under concrete. Since the breezeway is open, the concrete is exposed to harsh elements such as rain and snow. Therefore, a smooth slab covered in a layer of ice could be very dangerous. However, adding a broom finish to the concrete helps prevent that smooth, slippery surface from happening. Now it's time to place your chalk lines. Later in the process, you will have to cut control joints in your concrete to help with future cr cracking. Therefore, your chalk lines assure you get nice, straight control joints in your concrete at the correct placements. For the specific placements on your slab, reference your engineer plans. Once you verify your placements, place your chalk lines and assure they're easily visible on the slab. Cutting control joints in your concrete allows you to control and guide the cracks in your concrete. The control joints also protect the aesthetic look of your concrete, as any cracking will not be randomly spread across the slab. We recommend renting a walk-behind concrete saw for this step, as it will give you the best results. When cutting the slab, follow your chalk lines and try to cut at least a quarter of an inch into the thickness of the slab. And of course, take your time for the best results. Once your cuts are complete, you can choose to leave the joints as is or fill them in with a flexible material. You're finally into one of the last steps. In this step, you'll be covering your concrete to help the curing process. Temperature levels affect the curing process, so covering your concrete will help maintain its temperature levels and lack in moisture. For example, below freezing temperatures can cause the moisture inside the slab to freeze and crack. There are certain covers that are meant specifically for this, such as concrete curing bl blankets. However, we've also seen insulated tarps used as alternatives. Depending on the weather and how your slab will be used, your concrete can cure anywhere between one week to four weeks. For example, a four inch thick slab could cure in about a week in the summer, whereas a six inch thick slab in the winter could take approximately 28 days to cure. Don't forget to contact the scheduling department the same day as your concrete pour. Scheduling will note that the day your concrete will be fully cured and add you into the installation schedule. Once you're sure that your slab is cured, you can begin removing the forms. During this step, you have to remove all of the nails and screws in your forms and then remove the wood. When removing the wood, you should be able to easily pry it off with a tool such as a pry bar. If you sprayed the forms with oil, then the concrete should be nice and smooth and there shouldn't be any pieces of cement on the forms. Once all of your forms are off, you can go ahead and discard them. You're finally ready. At this point, your site is ready to welcome your new steel building. In this video, we walked you through the site preparation process and helped you get one step closer to your new steel building. We touched base on areas such as marking your site, creating forms, digging footings, reinforcement, pouring concrete, leveling and finishing, cutting control joints, covering cure time, and removing forms. Thank you for watching our very first video in our Builder Pro series. We hope this video helped you better prepare for your steel building. Don't forget to comment below any questions or comments and hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. I'm Liz. And I'm Brenda. 